What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Nissan Murano courtesy of Hanover Nissan in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so wanted to check this one out today because I've always kind of liked the look of the Murano. I got to be honest and traditionally it has been pretty solid when it comes to reliability as well. You guys can check out consumer reports for that but also we got some new colors for the 2021 model year there's some new standard safety for the 2021 model year as well and i'll get into that in the video of course and essentially i will be testing out and going over everything about this one acceleration braking ride quality rear seat legroom cargo capacity all that fun stuff so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so of course, there will be several different trim levels for the 2021 Murano. First one being the S, starting at $32,610. SV for $35,740. SL for $40,110. And lastly, the Platinum, which is the one we have today, starting at $44,160. And so, that was all pricing for the front-wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive, simply add $1,550 to any of those prices. But regardless, Regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Murano is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 260 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 240 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, power center front wheels or all wheels through a CVT, giving you a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.3 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 28 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel. But so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put that zero to 60 in 7.3 seconds to the test. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, there we go. Wow, quick start. <laughs> NAV sixes, they never disappoint me. That was a heck of an acceleration. I well, for what it is, it's not anything crazy or anything, but yeah. Plenty of acceleration to merge you onto the highway. And typically that is what you find in larger SUVs like the Murano, the Hyundai Palisade, the Kia Telluride, Acura MDX, just to name a few that come with the naturally aspirated V6. So it's pretty on par for the segment. Absolutely no issues with merging onto the highway. So to go along with that, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at an even 120 feet. Now I will say, it feels good, but it is kind of a softer braking feel. And sometimes you get that with SUVs. It's not a bad thing, it's just a thing. So I personally prefer a little bit stiffer of a braking feel, typically found in sports cars and sportier sedans, things like that. But it is a little bit on the softer side. So not a bad thing, just a thing, that's all. But 120 feet actually is plenty respectable. So there's plenty of SUVs that come in in the 130s, even upper 130s. So 120 is right on par. So. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as the ride quality goes, I will say it's all right. It's pretty much as expected. It's definitely not the smoothest ride I've ever felt for an SUV, and maybe that's just because Hanover's roads kind of suck, but it is pretty much on par for the course. I guess I'll put it that way. As far as steering feel goes, it's just right, quite honestly. Definitely not too heavy, but definitely not too loose either. There's some seriously loosey-goosey steering feels out there when it comes to SUVs, let me tell you. But this one is actually just right. I don't think they could have done the steering feel any better in the Murano here. As far as cabin noise goes, it's perfectly fine. Really, the only noise I'm getting right now, I got my ventilated seats on, which are quite nice. Let me tell you, I'll get more into all the seating later. But that's really the only noise I'm getting. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise really coming into the cabin, even with this large panoramic moonroof that we have here today so absolutely not disappointed there whatsoever and when it comes to visibility it's pretty great i can see perfectly fine out the back definitely shouldn't have any issues with visibility whatsoever but that about rounds up the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior and the new colors of the new 2021 nissan murano all right you guys so here she is the new 2021 nissan murano like i said before definitely looking good in my personal opinion finished in pearl white in case anybody was curious about our exterior color and by the way new colors for 2021 include magnetic black 
boulder gray and scarlet ember in case anybody wanted one of the new exciting colors for this one but anyways let's go ahead and start up front of the murano here v-motion front grille with chrome trim accents will come standard of course to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights are going to come standard on all trim levels with the automatic feature of course meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you then led fog lights just below you guys can see those these will actually come on the s v trim level and up then in case anybody was curious but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side in the murano here so starting up top roof rails are going to come on the sv trim level and up you guys can see these silver roof rails up top there chrome window surrounds are going to come standard on all trim levels also you're going to find that floating roof line towards the back of the murano i'm sure you guys can see that chrome door handles also coming standard on all trim levels to go with the chrome window surrounds and you get some chrome accenting towards the bottom next to the side skirts then as well they take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors with led integrated turret signals coming standard across the board and if you were to go with the sv trim level and up those side mirrors are also going to be heated then but then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 by 7.5 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the s and sv 20 by 7.5 inch machine finished aluminum alloys then for the sl and then you're going to get a dark hyper silver design then if you were to go with the platinum trim level that we have today and therefore that is what you guys are looking at right now but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the murano and so but now since we are around back body colored shark fin antenna found up top on the roof there just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper and then led taillights are actually going to come standard across the board every single trim level will get them that's always nice can of course find that trim level badging on the back as well in case anybody was curious when you're walking around the lot which trim you were looking at simply look at the rear lift gate that is going to tell you then and just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with brushed chrome tips so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So but now since we are around back of the Murano, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there are of course a few different ways you can go ahead and do that. First thing I want to mention, it is a motion activated lift gate for the SL and platinum trim levels only. Therefore, all I need to do is simply walk up to the rear lift gate, kick my foot underneath, and that is going to automatically then open up for me if my hands are full with groceries or kids or whatever. That's pretty convenient, but there is also a button on the lift gate itself. There is a button on the key fob then as well and so a few different ways to open it up but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 31.1 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 65 cubic feet and i will say it's pretty darn easy to fold down those rear seats you actually don't have to pull any levers to push them down or anything you do have to pull a lever but it's an easy access lever you just pull it and then it automatically folds down so i did like the way nissan set that up for the murano i gotta be honest but in that rear cargo area you pretty much have everything you could possibly want there is a 12 volt power outlet there is led cargo lighting there's eight cargo tie down hooks that is pretty cool there's some grocery bag hooks and if you were curious if there was in floor storage there is not however you will find a spare tire within that cargo floor in case anybody was curious whether it was that or the fix a flat it's the spare tire in the murano but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 38.7 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is me sitting behind my own driving position then also reclining rear seats which is always nice rear center armrest with cup holders which is pretty much as expected but that does come standard across the board heated rear seats you don't always get that one that one's going to come with the sl and platinum trim levels so i gotta be honest i was a big fan of seeing that rear ventilation of course coming standard as well and you will not only find a phone charging port but a usb charging port for those rear passengers then as well so once again well done nissan you're really hooking up the rear passengers there so i'm definitely a fan the only thing in addition to all of that i wanted to say was possibly some rear window sunshades but other than that it's got everything but then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating with the s 
SV trim level then is going to add to that 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar and a four-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well. SL trim level is going to add to that heated front seats, memory settings as well, and leather surfaces then as well for the SL, of course, L meaning leather. And then the platinum trim level lastly is going to add ventilated front seats and overall seating is pretty darn comfy, I will say that. And I do like the quilted pattern found on these seats too. It definitely gives it more of an upscale look and again overall seats were plenty comfortable in the Murano without a doubt but then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the SV trim level and up so not the S wanted to mention that heated steering wheel is going to come with the SL and platinum trim levels then as well but then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here it pretty much looks like every other Nissan key out there right now do you have your Nissan logo at the top you got the circular button which is going to be your remote start which by the way comes with the SV trim level and up lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch but then a push button start is going to come standard across the board so all i am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter then and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right and there is a decent sized digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are a few steering wheel mounting controls found on the left side of the steering wheel and so there is a good bit though you can definitely search through a bunch of different things if you wanted to up there of course is a digital speedometer speed limit recognition technology meaning it's going to tell you the speed limit of any given road that's always nice also outside temperature you have your radio settings you can display up there trip a trip b that's pretty boring but also safety information can be displayed up there when you need your next oil change tire pressure the list goes on essential what i'm getting at everything you could possibly want including how many miles you have left until you hit empty then as well but then make your way to overall interior quality a panoramic moonroof is going to come standard with the platinum that we have today however it is optional on both the sl and the sv with some package options if you wanted to go that route homeland controls are going to come with the sl and platinum trim levels there is also a overhead sunglass holder that will come standard across the board auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the sv trim level and up dual zone climate control actually coming standard on all trim levels then and if you were looking for ambient lighting that is going to come on the SL and platinum trim levels and actually overall when it comes to interior quality it is wonderful they nailed it with the Murano and Nissan has really been killing it lately with interior quality even if you're looking at like a Nissan Sentra you can get it basically looking like this which is amazing but anyways you got some wood trim you have tons of stitched leather with contrast stitching actually as well there's kind of a copper and silver tone that you can find on the doors to the stitching which is pretty cool of course you have a very soft center armrest here for resting your arm while you're driving you got some more wood trim in the middle of that and so just to the right of the shifter you do have a little bit of cubby storage there dual cup holders of course you have a usb charging port auxiliary port phone charging port 12 volt power outlet then as well just behind the shift you're going to find your heated and cooled seat buttons if you do get the platinum of course if your murano is equipped i should put it that way and if you were to open up that center armrest you will find the 12 volt power outlet some little cubby storage and a very deep area for more storage there as well so overall the murano honestly is borderline luxury if not definitely in the same boat that other luxury suvs have as well and this isn't even a luxury brand this is an infinity this is nissan and this is definitely infinity standards right here so i am very impressed with the interior quality but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen it is an eight inch color touchscreen display that does come standard across the board bluetooth and audio streaming comes with that android auto apple carplay as well and that's the big one that means if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the murano via usb cable and you have free navigation found up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your band door songs as well factory navigation system is going to come with the sl and platinum trim levels although you don't really need it as long as you have a smartphone because the android auto apple carplay can of course check out your radio settings up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound systems six speakers is going to come with the s trim level and sv and then if you were to go with the sl or platinum you're going to get an 11 speaker bose sound system with dual subwoofer so I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited to test out this one with the dual subwoofer. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our Bose sound system that we have here today. <music> It's 
it's not bad. Both sound systems are always pretty darn good. Not my very favorite out there, but definitely you can tell it's a high-end sound system and they're super reliable as well. Bose is a very reputable company. I had a Bose sound system in my old Infinity and it never failed me all the way up until I got rid of the Infinity at 100 and some thousand miles, I don't remember, but definitely a very nice sound system for the Murano without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Murano in reverse, of course you will find a rear view camera coming standard for all trim levels, but if you were to go with the SL or Platinum, you're also gonna get a full 360 degree monitor then as well, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags then as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board. I told you guys, this was new for 2021, a bunch of new standard safety. Forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, intelligent lane intervention, rear automatic braking, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, and high beam assist as well. So all of that even standard on the S trim level. So that is wonderful. Then if you were to go with the SV trim level and up, it is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors and adaptive cruise control as well. And so all in all, when it comes to my final thoughts here on the Murano, great interior quality that's the first thing i noticed when i got in this one i was like dang i just topped an infinity that's pretty cool so wonderful interior quality rear heated seats are absolutely wonderful it's actually really hard to find them these days you do get them on some luxury brands i will say that but you almost never get them on the non-luxury brand so i guess of course infinity being the luxury brand in nissan but it was really nice to see rear heated seats here in the murano Good exterior design as well. It's something that I've always liked personally. As far as constructive criticism goes though, these gauges are starting to get kind of dated. I would have loved to have seen a full digital gauge cluster. I know Nissan can do it. They have done it already. So a full digital gauge cluster would personally be pretty darn cool. That would be completely customizable. You can change it around however you like. But quite honestly, that's really all I got is the digital gauges just to make the interior quality absolutely perfect. And maybe a larger infotainment screen, but honestly, this eight inch color touchscreen display is really easy to use and it's perfectly fine for me. But that about rounds out this one, you guys. Let me know what you think of the Murano in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.